Good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Boys from the Baltic Star. I've just said hello, just I'm about to have a little cough, which is terribly unprofessional. But I hope you're well, I hope you're living the dream. And I hope you don't have a party going on outside your house, like I do with, uh, with, dr with, dr with bongo drumming, uh, for some strange reason. Which even Ewan can hear and he's, uh, he's further afield. But um, I hope you're all well, I hope you're enjoying uh, this weekend, I hope it's been good for you so far. And you are here with us on uh, the Voice in the Baltic Star. Um, it is the middle of the Baltic Star weekend. We've had two days already, Thursday, Friday, and we're back here tonight. And on Saturday, we play a whole variety of games and we get to have some of our favourite guests join us. Some of our special crew members uh, come along. And tonight we're extra specially treated. I said that really badly, but we'll go into that in a minute. It's just her being here is too exciting and I can't speak properly. <laughs> it, it never loses the it never loses the thrill. Um, <laughs> if it's your first time here, welcome. It doesn't get any better than this. And uh, we are playing a science fiction horror game this evening. And we will play, oh, I don't know, two and a half hours, two hours, something like that. We'll see how it goes. If they die, it might finish quicker. Um, but we'll see. And at some point in the middle, we'll have a break. Um, I normally forget. So it's normally you and sending me a message, <laughs> which, which reminds me. Um, so please feel free to sit back and relax for as long or as short as you want. Come and go as you wish. Um, if you want to chat, please feel free to chat. Um, we interact with chat as we go along. Um, if any of our regulars pop in, they will interact with chat as well. If you want to lurk, please feel free to lurk. We love our lurkers as well. There's a red sun there you can click. Ah, oh, Jareel. I'll see. I love our five, six weekly appearance. Drew, how are you doing? You all right? It's a joy to have you with us this evening. I, I, it's lovely to know we have a returning viewer who's, uh, who's here for the ghillie, you see, and, and Ben's death at some point, no doubt. Um, but yes, the red, the red sun is there. Click on it to spend some points. Um, what, what, let's do some suggestions. Uh, when Gil is here, we have a special one for Gilly to make her feel welcome. So we use some midlanding talking. Um, where is it? It's Mind you, this end, I'll come over this road occasionally. I don't mind going abroad. It's recorded off uh, Gilly's grandfather, in fact. It's, uh, it's, it's an old, <laughs> no one knows that, but uh, I had to, it took a long time to hunt it down. Um, but look, there's lots of points you can spend there. Um, some are silly, some are ridiculous. I've kept Clonk on, so if you play Clonk, uh, one of our crew members of your choice has to hit or kick something or someone as soon as possible. Thought I'd leave that one on tonight. Um, there's Boon to be Wild if you want to give someone um, an extra dice, an extra roll. Uh, you can name an NPC if you want. Those are a bit expensive, but they're sort of game altering. That's why. But there's a lot of other things that are cheaper. You can make Ben drink. You can make him dance. You can make... Uh, Show your love for you, and you can do all sorts of things, really. So, um, ah, uh, Diesel, how are you doing, Lee? You're right. Thank you for joining us. What a pleasure to have you in. Um, there's also the one a credit. I'll drink to that. So, if something is said, or there's a toast, or something happens, we like to keep think some things are one credit, so anyone can join in as part of the vibe. Have, have I forgotten to take out to Greyhill? Oh dear, no, nope. that's okay. It's gone. So yes, so that's the red sun and so on. That's chat. Chat if you want to chat or don't. Time. Uh, so I guess it's just introducing us and the game. So first up, I'm in the bottom right-hand corner, and my name is Luke. Hello. I am the GM uh, this evening, and it's my job um, to try to kill the three... I think that's what GMs are supposed to do. And they're going to try and survive as long as they can. I think... They've only got 25 more years left to survive, and then they might actually get out of their um, contracts. They're doing quite well, so uh, maybe it's time to ramp up the difficulty a little bit. Um, so anyway, who are this wonderful crew? Let's start from the bottom and work our way up. Um, directly ahead of me, above me, with an up, up and down high five, I'm hoping you can imagine that. It's like, a, oh, this is it's a bit like a Freemason's handshake here. I don't, I don't like that at all. That was very awkward. Um, <laughs> that was, um, that's, that's my brother from another mother, that most handsome man. The housewife's favourite. Um, it is uh, the tie-dye hero himself. It's Ewan. Uh, good evening, Ewan. How are you? Hi, Luke. I'm good, thanks. I'm good. I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm very well, excited. You should be. As always. Ah, that's because you're the star of the show. It's easy to be excited <laughs> when you're the star. Oh, 
In fact, um, did you do anything exciting today at all? I haven't really messaged you much. Uh, no, not really. To be honest, I had a bit of a lazy one. Chill out, relax. Get ready for uh, <laughs> back to work on Monday. Mm. Dear viewers, and of any... course for tonight. That's just anyone that knows, that watches the channel, and even if they don't, needs to know that you and having a rest is a very important thing, as Ben and I both know. He's, mm. he's, he is the man that has to get up early. Um, he's the man that sort of doesn't get to work from home like Ben and myself. He has to trudge halfway across the county. So he's allowed a lie yeah. on a Saturday. He's allowed a rest on a Saturday and a Sunday. If you're happy, you and we're not, happy. Not Saturday night, though, when you come banging on my window because I've overslept for a, <laughs> for a TTRPG session. <laughs> it didn't go down very well with this good lady wife, it must be said. She's a, lo she's, a lovely, she's a lovely lady. <laughs> and and, uh, and I was in the wrong. But anyway, moving on. Um, actually, Ewan was in the wrong. Anyway, um, Ewan, why don't you tell us, uh, tell us and everyone about the character you're playing in this saga? I'm going to call it a saga. I'm going to pick my papers up. Saga before. is really setting the tone. Yeah. Hey, Crit Pal, by the way. Um, <laughs> I am playing Liam Deturi, the, uh, the ship's liaison officer. Uh, and back up, back up, lesser skilled science officer. Um, one of my only characters that doesn't have a beloved jacket, I think, in <laughs> in these Saturday night adventures that we play out. Uh, but they are left-handed. They do uh, don a, not a top knot and a, and a handlebar moustache. Uh, and he's, he's a bit upset, frankly, that... He he thought he'd found his place for retirement on uh, on Antilles Station, and then foolishly ruined the whole thing, and can now never return. So he's coming to terms with that. And um, and why can't he return, you and? Uh, he tried to incite a riot. <laughs> it was most it was mostly causing a distraction, <laughs> but uh, yeah, didn't end didn't end well. Uh, well, he, was, he was a hero in the moment, though. Because of him, the rest of the crew can thrive. So, mm. so, so well done. I'm sure they feel Thankfully. that towards you. <laughs> Speaking of thriving, we have um, we have the person that um, most closely challenges Ben to being the smartest person in the room. He still remains the smartest, <laughs> smartest man in the room, but <laughs> but overall, not so much. <laughs> It is uh, our favourite Midlander, and I lived there for <laughs> seven years, so I know a lot. It is she was utterly appalled at the cost of booze in Kent. It is uh, the delightful, and quite frankly, the one person that's got control over this situation. Uh, Gilly, good evening, Gilly. How are you? Hello. Good evening. I'm very well, thank you. Good. I'm, I'm glad. Have you had a, a lovely weekend so far? You've been all right. Yeah, been busy, but time for a bit of bit of a rest now. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, I don't know if you're the same. Sometimes when it hits one o'clock, I wish I was in bed, but but I hope we enjoy this evening. Not not when you're here, of course. Just when I'm playing with the others. <laughs> um, who um who do you play in this wonderful adventure of us? I play Shay Hawkins, who is Helm Officer Extraordinaire. And school nurse, who's quite handy with a pair of stilts. Oh, she is. Um, she, um, as a school nurse, this, I, I want to ask her sort of her knowledge as a school nurse. Does a, would you say an ice, an ice pack or a blue paper towel with cold water, which is the best way to heal uh, serious injuries definitely a blue paper towel broken leg wet paper towel do the job yeah see spoken see i think this is why shay hawkins has a plus one to all her medical roles because because she knows <laughs> she knows wet paper towels the knowledge it. half of um in fact if you go into the medical uh, room in on the nakuru and you open up all the cupboards it is all blue paper towels you might it expect is. you must have like shot shots of all kinds of drugs and everything, but no, it's just blue paper towels. And the ship is better for it. 
Um, the last one of us, right at the top, where he belongs, of course. The smartest man in any room. He lives his entire life in the Twin Peaks dream sequence. And he sneaks around at night, leaving chocolates on the bedside table of women around the country. It is the delectable Ben. Good evening, Ben, and how are you? I'm all right, thank you. I'm all right. After missing out on last night's game, and kudos to you for that, by the way. You and you were brilliant. Um, I'm very much looking forward to getting back into the saddle, so to speak. Uh, we miss we miss you when you're not here, and it's always a delight to have you back. Um, <laughs> when I am here, you think, no, no, we shouldn't have missed him. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm already longing for the next time you're not here. No. <laughs> Um, while you are here this evening, who are you? Who are you playing as? I play a character called Misha Renkoff. Um, he is the engineering officer and has a little bit of science as well. Uh, but he uh, is mostly notable for his um, abysmal charisma and very, very poor <laughs> joke telling ability, while at the same time, oddly having turned out to be much better with a gun than he has any reason to believe he should be yes his stats do not suggest that he would be able to even point a gun straight let alone fire it at something but he has actually had some success <laughs> and any success is above his pay grade quite right too i'm glad he knows how to fire a gun it may come in a lot of, very handy over the coming sessions you know i've been easy on you so far but I've, i'm feeling Renkov especially is ready to step up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I, I think he's basically willing to do the minimum amount necessary to ensure the crew's survival. Um, but he he doesn't have any confidence beyond we may get out of this alive. My, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Even if he's 60, 40, that's pretty good, I'd say. He'd take those odds right now, yeah. <laughs> so dear viewers we're playing um using um those dark places rule set and in that each of the characters has four main skills and they also have two job roles you can see the job roles at the top of the screen for each of them um they're kind of in order today if you just take those three and sort of rotate them around so keep meter in his place and rotate the others down they line up with the people so yearn is liam gilly is shay and uh, ben is misha so as you can see, Liam is the chief liaison officer, and he also does some science. He he dabbles in science. Shay is like, quite frankly, with her roles, the best helmsman that Maitland has ever seen, and <laughs> and also pretty good with a blue paper towel. Whereas Misha <laughs> likes to crawl around in the in the ducts and the vents, and um, likes to sit up at night at, at Liam's table doing scientific experiments together. Uh, Only the... one of those things is true. <laughs> well, well, let's wait. Let's wait and find out. Um, down the bottom is the rest of the crew. These are the uh, NPCs. We got Eddie, we got Carla, and we got Evan. Evan is special. Evan is a Sam, so he's an android, everyone, and he absolutely loves spin. Just so, uh, just so everyone's aware of that. Um, the numbers next to them is um, Eddie is eighteen, Carla six. That's how many. When they've signed up, so these guys are signed up as well. When you sign up to Maitland, um, you run for 25 years is your contract. That includes time in long sleep. And when you hit 25, you're allowed to retire. And you're, like, you're given a bit of money and a, you know, and a place to stay. And you get to chill out for the rest of your life. Ed is nearly there. So you know, take that as you will for how he'll behave in any situation. But he's redeemed himself recently, Ben. He's gone up in your estimation, I feel. I mean, a little bit. Yeah, a very, very little bit. <laughs> it doesn't change what he is, you understand. I wouldn't like to, wouldn't like to say that's for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, so everyone in this game has a charisma, agility, a strength, and education. Um, each will have one in one, two in one, three in one, and four in one. So just quickly, so that people can get a grasp of this Ben could you run us down your 4, 3, 2 and 1 please so people know certainly can um, Misha has a 1 in charisma a 2 in agility a 3 in education and a 4 in strength so um, 
so that's why his shooting is low because uh, uh, agility is used for shooting. So uh, he's a strong, smart, he's like the Incredible Hulk, basically. Um, next, Gilly, what about Shay's stats? Shay has got a four in agility, three in strength, two in education and one in charisma. So as you can see, uh, a very uncharismatic crew, uh, which, which sort of explains a lot, really. Mm -hmm. so, um, finally, Liam, can you bring some charisma as the liaison officer? Well, of course, that's why I'm the liaison <laughs> officer with my charisma of two, my agility of one, my, my strength of three and my education of four. Mm -hmm. oh, wonderful. So uh, he's a smart man. You'll notice they've all got a bit of strength. That's because that is to do with uh, health. And so it's quite important to have a strength that's kind of a three or four really in the game because it's a very deadly game. So anyway, now we've done all the housekeeping. and caught people up. Where were we? So the crew of the Nakuru have just arrived in the Glisa 667 system off pretty much their initial plan when they signed up however they've had to take a few detours nearly been killed a few times the ship's been hit with some detritus they found missing bodies then they found dead bodies they found a living body they found undead bodies um, they found a lot of creepy android bodies um, they found some mining bodies that were alive and then ended up being deaded. And uh, they've jumped back on board their beloved Nakuru and headed off to their next mission. The mission as it stands takes them to the AMC 222, a mining, um, a mining outpost orbiting around Gleesa. And um, here they were given a job their first job that they were given, they thought, was just to bring supplies. The Nakuru is a supply ship. But instead, when they got there, they got a lovely surprise that this wasn't just a supply run. But things have kind of gone a bit pear-shaped on the mining catch. You see, two members of staff have died, probably murdered, and another one's gone missing. Two workers were found mutilated in the mine, and there appears to be foul play in that disappearance of that third person. There's a rush to get it done because the mine is uh, mining very important material that is worth a lot of money to Maitland, and every delay costs money. So they've been given a bonus. Now, bonus in this game is not in money, but in time. So far, that entire trip for there and back would net them 587 days off their time. But Maitland, if they can get everything settled, work out what was going on, get the miners back to work, and we know what miners are like, um, they will get 900 days in total. However, thanks to some schmoozing, quite frankly, from Chief Liaison Officer Liam Vittori, they will provide them with 1,000 days if they can get everything settled, work out what's happened, get the miners back to work mining within three days. And so surely this is the aim of the crew. Now to start this, the clock is ticking and the crew have just docked with a ship that orbits around the moon upon which the mine is placed. This ship is called the Grahams, and it runs in orbit to provide the miners with holiday time. The, the, it's quite common in mining situations because of course they can't just take time off and go back to earth because they're so far away. Three miners at a time get to go up in the Grahams, spend a week doing whatever they wish to do, and then have to fly the Grahams back down where they're replaced by another three for a week and another three and another three. So every 10 weeks of work will net them one week on the Grahams. 
So the crew have just docked. I can move us from the Nakuru to the Grahams because the umbilical has hissed. It is fully oxygenated. And all six of you are able to exit your airlock and into the Grahams. But if there's anything you wish to do before then, I shall hand over to you. Um, not in this second, I don't think. I can't think of anything. No. No. Excellent. Anyone want to go first across the threshold? Um, yes, I want to go third. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go first. Ah, well done, Shay. Um, <laughs> Carla will bundle up past uh, Misha elbowing him out of the way to come um, alongside you. And Eddie, who has rediscovered some of his bravery, uh, will bundle past Misha as well. Um, Realising that he is actually the security officer and it's kind of his job to be there or thereabouts. <laughs> as for the liaison officer, Liam, where, where, where are you shouldering for? Uh... He'll probably head along just behind, you know, that first, first little group. Oh, so you're bundling past Misha as well, then? Yeah. So, um, so we've got uh, we've got Shay and Carla. We've got Eddie just behind with Liam on his shoulder, and bringing up the rear are Misha and Evan, side by side, walking out, um, shoulder to shoulder. So the doors, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> the doors slide open, and you are met with the interior of the Grahams, which I'll bring up now. And I hope that's big okay. enough for you. Um, you need to look for the airlock. So you sort of come up, the it sort of comes through. It, you know, because this is a three dimension, a flat image of a three dimensional. You can get to yep. the airlock. It's not landlocked, as it were. Um, so you're coming through the into the airlock, which is all open because there's lots of um, all the airs passing between the ships and yep. you can make and you can make your way down into the large cargo bay. Expecting, considering you've been welcomed by someone on the radio, perhaps you might have been expecting a welcoming party, but there is no one around as it stands. And you're left in a rather large cargo bay looking maybe 30 meters long. From, from your end to the far end, and incredibly empty. A few empty boxes scattered around, a few beds chucked in the corner, a few space suits up by the airlock to be hastily thrown on, and a computer system to sort of run the airlock, really, and that's your lot. Clearly everyone's very excited to see us. Um, is there any um, sense of like weird air pressure or anything? My ears popping, any hissing sound, anything like that? Uh, roll um, education, please. And I'll give it to you with engineering, as I feel like oxygen things are a very engineering kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. So this is 1d6 plus my thing, isn't it? Yes, 1d6 plus your thing, and there'll be a target, which for people watching is normally 7 or 8, 9 if it's a right. Check. Now, given that it's education, which is a 3 for me, and um, and I get my engineering, which is a 2, that means I get to add 5, and then I've got to hit potentially 7. Yeah. And that should be all right. That's a 10 total. <laughs> ah! Um, what you can tell is that the air is... Okay, the um, the humming seems legit. It's a bit mustier than the Nakuru, but that's just because it's a ship that, believe it or not, is looked after even less than the Nakuru has been. It's running fine. There's, um, no, there's no green goo hanging out of the <laughs> out of like the air filters or anything. 
I, I know because, you know, I have access to a map in front of me. I know where the engineering is. Would I be able to tell without looking at a map? Would Everything. there be like a sign above that portway through to the engineering? Yes, there are signs everywhere. They're a bit grubby and old, but there are definitely signs. So you've got the sign to engineering, and then next to the other door, we'll say through to lounge, medical, bridge, long sleep. Okay. Then in that case, I will nod towards the engineering door, and I will say, I'll... um. Go and check out engineering. Okay. Sure. Make make yourself at home. <laughs> Just curious why there's no one coming, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I mean I suppose it is their uh it is their uh, R and R time, is that right? Luke, you said that they sort of throw them and come up here. Yes. You know, I guess this is Kind of the only time off they get. Why waste it talking to us? Anyway, enjoy the uh, enjoy the engineering department. Thank you. I'm sure it will be lavish <laughs> and exciting. You too, Evan. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. I don't need Evan for this. <laughs> are you Are you sure, Renkov? I'm fully capable of um, checking over what's needed in engineering. I'll I'll tell you what I'll 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 call you if I need you. Okay, Rankov. Sounds fair. And he just sort of stands. He doesn't even bother looking around anyway. He just sort of stands very very still and very bolt upright by the doorway. Which is a completely normal thing for people to do, of course. Right. Um, yeah, I will head through to engineering. So I don't know what the others are doing while I do that. Um. Let's find out, because then we can go to you in a minute. Uh, Gilly or Ewan, anything particularly you want to do at the moment? Um, I might head to the lounge, see if there's anyone kicking back. The lounge sounds like the place to, uh, to meet people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to split here. Um, Eddie and Carla are willing to let the two of you head off there, um, checking around the cargo. Because, of course, part of the job is a, it's a sort of refilling stuff and things. So they're going to check to see what's what's available in the cargo and check that everything's sort of a bit kosher in here. Uh, we'll do engineering first. Okay, Ben, you head through the mm. door. Um, behind you, you can see Evan standing bolt upright, staring at you as you walk down the short corridor to engineering. Okay. Um, is is there a door at the other end that's closed or open? Uh, the door is uh, wide open. They're a bit okay. older. They're, they're the old, you know, windy hatches, and pretty much every door you've seen so far has been swinging free. <clears throat> um, remind me, what kind of personal communicators do we have? Can we talk to each other across the ship? Yes, you tend to have one of two. You sort of You've got little small, they're like cigarette case sized, almost like walkie talkies, really. It's quite low tech in that regard. But only audio, there's no visual on it, and there's no taking photos or anything. Okay, J just a walkie talkie, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I will actually mention to the others that the hatches all seem to be open in engineering. Uh, just Keep your eyes open. See if um, see if anywhere's closed off or left weirdly open. Because these hatches are normally shut for a reason. Um, and then I shall step through into engineering, please. Take a look around. Okay. Um, engineering is um, at first look seems to be in decent enough shape um, for any of us um, for Liam or Shay um, glancing their eyes over no having spent time in rooms they would see the lights looking the right color you know and be calm enough could you roll an engineering for me please with your intelligence with your education sorry. with education yep yeah. I absolutely can that's plus five to another five that's a ten man you're nailing it today um, so far, so good. You've gone full Gaston today. You're doing very well. Um, 
<laughs> but as you look around with your more educated eye, this is sort of your this is your domain. You know, you spent out many hours in these sort of places. Um, you're quick to be able to pull out that readings seem fine, a bit low on a lot of readings, but still within sort of the central green safety mm -hmm. parameters. Oxygen, you know, like like you could breathe. A little bit needs a bit more scrubbing, but it's fine. Um, sort of the, uh, the the gravity on board the ship is fine, just a little bit low. Um, oxygen levels in the tanks is fine. Fuel is fine. Um, it's it's not very well looked after, but it's okay. The next thing you notice is that pretty much every single um, every single workstation, every single space of a site is just covered in beer cans, bottles, uh, reconstituted food wrappers, cigarettes in sort of a few ash, like half made ashtrays, you know, they've smashed down a can and tapped the ash into yeah. like the top half. Um, there's some stuff on the floor. There's, um, there's sort of some wash clothes washing hung from a line between two very important engineering uh, monitors. Okay. Um, I will um, open up the walkie-talkie again and say, well, guys, looks like there was a party in engineering and we missed it. I'm coming to join you. And I will start to make my way out, but I will close and seal the hatch to engineering at both ends of that corridor, please, as I go. Oh, you're such a such a straight. You're such a company man, aren't you? Okay. A diligent. Besides, <laughs> you're looking for Luke. Well, I'm not a big fan of rapid depressurization in spaceships. Hmm. That's not the attitude. It's mine to this end. I'll come over this road occasionally. <laughs> I don't mind going abroad. Ah, beautiful. Um, okay. So we'll head over to, um, as you wander past through cargo, you'll see the other two rooting around, Eddie and Carla, almost banging to Evan, who will move aside and then walk about a pace behind you as you go. Um, let's head up to Gilly and Evan. So um, you and, sorry, Evan. Um, Shay, Liam, um, are you happy just to, the door is, as you walk into the first corridor with its open hatch, you can see that, 10 metres down the corridor, the um, the door at the other end is also swinging open. Okay. Um, I will approach it. Fantastic. Could you roll an agility for me, please? Yep. <laughs> That's a one plus a four is a five. Oh, no. It's quite dark in the corridor and... Um, as you're sort of following that sort of the beam of the dark, the sort of the dim light through to the lounge, um, your feet tr sort of scuff into something and you trip over, sending um, the sound of like metal cans and glass bottles scattering across the floor and you land sprawled on your front amongst, um, amongst more detritus. Okay. I will go very red in the face and quickly stumble to my feet. Uh, Liam gets on the communicator and just says, uh, oh, that's, uh, that's uh, a Roger on the party, Misha. <laughs> uh, you all right, Shay? Yeah, fine. Nothing wounded but my pride. Uh, and then I think Liam will, oh, Liam will shout out, say hello. Oh, Ro uh, roll a liaison with uh, charisma, please. <laughs> it's very light like liaison role ever. <laughs> it's very, it's very basic liaisoning. But you're liaisoning. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> <laughs> it shows because it's a one. <laughs> Deserve it. Four is a five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel probably it's probably no. about right. There's no response. Mm. 
That's not exactly reassuring. Uh, it seems odd. Hmm. Uh, where's our, where's our security officer, <laughs> Eddie? Do, do you want to, <laughs> given the uh, the no signs of anyone, do you want to take lead on this one? Just go roll something. No, you're all right. We're checking through things here. You're fine. There's nothing. There's nothing dodgy. They're probably just, I don't know. Probably watching a film or something. And then he rather pointedly goes, oh, look at that, and then hangs up. <laughs> oh, what'd you find? Anything good? There's no... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no response. Uh, Liam nods, nods at Shane. Seems about. Sounds about right for uh, for Eddie. Mm. Uh, well, shall we? And gestures towards uh, the lounge area. Yeah. And I'll carry on approaching, but a bit more careful this time. <laughs> oh, you said the magic careful word. No rolls for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay um as you make it through to the um the the, open, the swinging open doorway to the lounge um you know it's it's a nice sized lounge but it's very um plain inside it's um like all um maitland ships of a style the, the ceiling is very low as the nakuru so you get that kind of sense of oppressiveness and as it's very interior, there are no external windows whatsoever. Um, so the artificial lights are high up on the walls, but the top of the ceiling is only two and a bit meters. In the middle, there's a couple of uh, metallic tables that have been sort of pulled together in the middle and a few chairs, like three chairs around them. Um, on the middle of that is, um, They've sort of dragged in like a big old view scanner that used to be used for charting positions around view scanner, which they've just dumped on top to almost work as like a, a makeshift gaming table, I guess. There's, there's a couple of decks of cards that have sort of been shuffled together and splayed out as if playing some game you don't recognize. There's a chessboard with a couple of pieces missing and replaced by sort of a spent shotgun shell here and uh, sort of a bit of a mining tool, sort of a little bit replacing a pawn elsewhere. And uh, again, a lot of bottles everywhere, especially in, um, as you're looking at it, the top right corner. And there's a whole pile of black bin bags for refuse and rubbish. And there's a big stench of sort of alcohol and mustiness and cigarette smoke almost like a smoke smoke that would go up to the ceiling because the ceiling so low is hanging at sort of your mouth level and up so you walk through a haze of that is it fresh smoke or is it quite stale oh shay this is a canonical moment for you is she, a sm is she a smoker? Has she ever been a smoker? I'm going to say she was a smoker, but she quit. Oh, very healthy. Well done. I, need yeah. to write, I need to write a canon note down. She was a smoker. Um, <laughs> then could you please roll um, education, but I will also give mm -hmm. you medical because smoking is a medical condition thing, you know, and um, I'll make it an easy check for you. Okay. I might need it with my luck today. <laughs> oh, no. Got a six plus a three with a nine. Nice. Uh, your sort of, your experience knows from sitting in your room with your friends as a, as a teenager, you know, smoking away and trying to blow out the window in the, 
helping your parents turn up kind of thing that um there is a certain level of fresh smoke in here there's a lot of stale and the ceiling is quite yellowed but there is fresh in there too oh, okay <clears throat> seems like someone's been here quite recently what makes you uh what makes you say that fresh cigarette smoke can always tell when it's fresh <laughs> uh can as Liam's saying this uh can you check out the, the empty bottles and see what they are uh, you can and it takes no need to roll anything to look because pretty much all of them are um Maitland branded lager. It's just labels that say lager with the Maitland logo. You've seen them everywhere before. It's if you wanted it, you would have to spend time, you know, if you're on a ship or something. But um, you know from restocking your ship that these are what are given to big mining. You know, when they go out there for years and years and years. Pretty much all lager. There's a couple of um, Maitland whiskey, Maitland vodka, Maitland cola, but mostly alcohol. All Maitland. All Maitland. Nothing fancy. In fact, he'll, he'll say that to Shay. He'll hold up a couple of couple of empties and say that it's all all Maitland stuff. Can you have a look in the bin bag as well, please? Um, you can um, look in the bin bag. So you, you want to drive to the corner. Could you roll um, education for me, please? Mm. Uh, it's a four plus four is an eight. Okay. Um, you see a pair of legs sticking out from between the bin bags with one boot on and one bootless with a sock with a big hole with the big toe sticking through. Uh, hey, Shay, I think I've, I think I've got one of them over here. No. Uh, he'll kick the boot leg. Either that or busted Sam. <laughs> uh, and can he? He reach down and touch the toe, see if it's warm. What are you touching it with? His hand. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll poke it with a bottle, but that won't tell me whether it's warm or not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, ro roll an education plus any medical skill you have. Uh, science. <laughs> no. Transferal. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. So five plus four is a nine. Uh, it, it appears to be... Um, soft and warmish it's not cold and hard that's for sure <laughs> i think they're i think they're all right i mean i mean i'm no medic but they're warm at least uh and did you say they're like underneath the refuge refuse bags yeah it's sort of, you know, if either someone had been thrown there or fallen into that place and sort of sunk down and sort of underneath them kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he'll, he'll pick one off the top off the top of them and start looking through. Through the, through the bag, I guess. Okay. Um, could you throw... As he set out to do. Could you please roll um, agility for me, please? Mm, yeah. That's a one plus one uh, is a two. 
as as you pick up the bag, um, you um, you can't quite get it around the way you would, and you, because of, there's sort of bottles in it. And as you do it, you sort of rip the one bottle against the other. And as you pull it apart, you just leave a massive trail of bottles and cans and cigarette ash just crash down all over the guy and all over your legs and all over Gilly's legs and just make an absolute mess. There's bin goo in there. It's all rather nasty. Sorry, Shay. Uh, uh, okay. it's I mean, it's definitely rubbish. <laughs> And at this point, uh, the figure opens their eyes and jerks up. Ah! 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 Oh, my head! Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. So trying to focus. Points at, points at the middle gilly. Uh, points at the middle show. Sorry. The middle show and says, <laughs> Who are you? We're not back at the station, are we? My name's Hawkins. I'm from the Nakuru. The no what now? The Nakuru. Are you an angel? Do you want me to be? Ah, uh, ah. <laughs> uh, uh, if you are, if you were an angel, you'd uh, you'd get me something for my head. Oh, please! Medical's just up through there and points up towards. The hatchway towards where medical is on the map. Okay. Please, if they've got anything for horses, even better. All right, then I'll go and get you something for your head. Um, Shifty off to medical. Okay, the figure slumps down, so we're going to um, moaning. So we will follow, follow Shay. Um, up to medical where it's um it seems sparse and unused there's a couple of beds there for, from when the ship actually traveled places and uh, there's a lot of cabinets there but they're all open pretty empty um there's some blue paper towels in the corner of course and there's um a sort of a, a water cooler for for wetting them there's um there appears to be one box full of stuff, from what you can tell. And that is full of the stuff that you would have on a week away, you know. So you're talking about, they know what the miners are going to be like. So it is painkillers, hangover, stuff for hangovers, for, for cuts and sprains and small stuff like that. Okay, I'll rifle through and find some painkillers. Strokey? Um, roll a education with your medical, please. That's a four plus three is a seven. Okay. Um, you find um, you find some uh, neck. The I'm um, sorry, Maitland ibuprofen with a with a red strong on the corner. Those will do nicely. <laughs> I'll take him some water as well from the water cooler. Oh. If there's some sort of receptacle to put it in. Sure, why not? There is. Um, okay, and you can hear sort of the moaning of moaning of him out in the lounge as you're sort of finishing up there. Oh, my head, Angel, where are you? Hey, Joe. <laughs> I will hurry back. Ah, oh, did you bring me? Did you bring me the good stuff? I did. Extra strong, just for you. Oh, how many does it say I'm supposed to take? Um, a couple, maybe. No, give me six. <laughs> I'll give him a couple. He grabs them in his in his uh, hands, shoves them into his mouth, and uh, he sort of can't get them down. And he starts uh, chewing on them, and sort of 
he gets that look in his mouth as like that horrible bitter powdery stuff and it's like gargling around his mouth because he can't quite swallow them back rah, 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 holds out his hand for some liquid rah, 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 rah. <laughs> i'll pass him the water he sort of sips it down and <laughs> sprays it out all over all over liam's top <laughs> what's this this isn't beer you trying to kill me it's water it's good for you good for you maybe where's the beer oh my head there are the dog please you know that doesn't really work what what are you medical or something <laughs> yep uh, something like that fine give me another give me another six pills and some of this water oh i'll just throw in the box ah he sort of pops a load out into his hand and just chucks them in and grimaces as he as he swigs on the water and gets them down. And then there's like an audible sigh. And he just lies back, tries to make himself a little bit more comfy on the bin bags and picks picks a few bits of detritus off him. And just lies there, breathing more steadily with his sort of his eyes closed. <sighs> Now, do you want to tell us who you are? Uh, well, sure. My name's Wilkes. W-I-L-K-E-S. Oh, God. Where did you say you were from? Nakuru. Nakuru. Oh, you're those that are bringing supplies, right? Yeah, that's us. Good, because I think we're out of beer. You got some on board? Have we got some beer on board? <laughs> yeah, you have. You've got everything that the mine needs for, <laughs> <laughs> for like, for like, you got like three years worth of supplies for this place. You got loads. <laughs> the mines yeah. run on beer. <laughs> mines, yeah, yeah. <laughs> three, three years worth of beer. <laughs> Oh, good. Oh, I'm oh, sorry you have to meet me in this state, but we can't drink on the surface, so when we get the chance for some of us, it's just a week-long bender, you know? Oh, um, oh. so have you seen the others yet? Nope, you're the first. Well, lucky you. Yeah. I'm the. I'm. I was. I was ranked most likely to become a liaison officer in my whole class. I can tell you're just oozing charisma. Oh, uh, I know. It's not easy being this naturally cool, you know. You've caught me on a bad day, but. I still think, you know. Yeah. You might want to work on having a shower. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? It's hard to, it's hard to smell. It's hard to smell it. Hard to, you know, I say you can never smell it on yourself, you know? Mm. Oh, no. I can't Especially smell it on myself. Especially when you've been sleeping in trash. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, who are you? Uh, I'm, I'm Liam. Liam. You're a charming man, aren't you? <laughs> well, I mean, you should say that. I am the liaison officer. <laughs> oh. Oh. I feel like I'm talking to a, a fellow charismatic, suave character like myself now. How do you get that moustache so well kept? It's, uh, just takes a lot of time. Sharp blade. Ah, I would, I would, I'd love to grow one again. But downstairs, uh, downstairs, you know, down on the, in the mines. I don't, don't want to know about your downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I trim those We're as well. We're talking moustaches <laughs> here. You're talking moustaches. 
Down on the surface, we have to uh, re-free the masks around when we're not in the main rooms. And I, I tried, but, you know, my beard used to like, pop out underneath and be all kinky at the end of the day. It's not a good look, you know. It's not a good look, kinky beard. A standard issue for liaison officer, so, you know, get, get Patterson. Do you think I've got it in me? Yeah, I'd say so, given my uh, my experience of other liaison officers so far. <laughs> Polar charisma and a liaison. Uh, it's a two plus four is a six. <laughs> oh, you lying bastards. Yeah, anyway. Uh, maybe the other two will be able to tell you what's going on. I think it's... I think we're supposed to be going back today anyway. I think that's why I went on such a massive one last night. If you go back, if you get back under the influence, they make you sleep the rest of the day off. It didn't take long for us to figure out the loophole. Let's put it that way. Get an extra day, pretty much. Smart. That's, what can I say? I'm a man of many talents. Wilkes, they always used to say, you're a man of many talents and question, questionable personal hygiene. <laughs> so you, you've been up here six days, you reckon? This is day seven, I think. This I lost, I lost, seven. I lost track on day two, but I think. Judging, how by many the, hangovers? judging by the state of my socks, I think it's day seven. Oh, it's just one. It's one hangover. <laughs> okay. Oh. Sounds about right then. If if you're here, we were told you'd be here. You'd be here for for the day we were going back. So uh, that makes a lot of sense. I'll tell you who will know. Callahan. Callahan's the most senior on board. She's not like a officer or anything like that, but. When three of us come up, one's always like the one that has to kind of keep things going a little bit. It's normally the one that drinks least, you know. <clears throat> so find find her. Yeah. And um, she'll probably know what's going on. I'm just going to lie here and finish my snooze, if that's all right with you two. Go ahead. Yeah. Knock yourself out. Oh, now you're talking. He's, sort of, he's reaching around in the rubbish and sort of... He, he sort of, you can see him sort of shaking a couple of the bottles and finds one that isn't quite empty and glugs back a little bit more beer before laying back with a sigh and closing his eyes and snoring within within seconds. Classy. Classy man. Mm. Oh, hold on. Liam will uh, just say, give, give the booted leg a kick again and just say, ah, who's, who's the third? Ah, uh, uh, Rahimi. R A H I M I, that's for you guys. Rahimi, no idea. No idea where they are. Could be anywhere. But they're here. There's no way off, is there? Thanks. So at this time, Misha enters, uh, just as you're, just as he starts snoring again, just so that Ben's away. Yeah. You found a person? Yeah, a live uh, one. You're sure? And they might Barely. Be hmm. <laughs> um, I I'm getting the feeling that they drink more than anything else here. They just come and drink. I've got that yeah, feeling they... too. They can't drink on surface, apparently. So they make up for it, I guess, when they're uh, mm. when they're up here. Well, well done. I didn't find anyone in engineering, but the place is a tip. Not actually quite as bad as here. Um. Any Ooh. ideas? We're uh, looking for two more, aren't we? Yeah, uh, Renkoff, by the way, meet uh, meet Wilkes, and he'll kick kick 
kick the boot again. Wilkes, this is Renko. Man, this is Wilkes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The arm half. half Consider yourself up. liaised. <laughs> <laughs> You're liaised. Oh. Uh, really in his element, isn't he, Liam, tonight? Excellent. <laughs> I'm, I'm delighted to meet him. Um, if we find the other two in similar state, I'm fairly convinced this isn't going to answer the question as to why the mine's off offline, is it? Because these people weren't supposed to be working it anyway, right? No, but do we know the other the other problem down at the mine? Do we know when that happened? No, not really. We know there were mutilations and missings. So Did the voice that we heard on the comm as we approached sound male or female? Uh, the voice was female. About like docking and things like that, the voice was female. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm guessing Wilkes is, was not the dulcet tones we heard on the way in. So, stick together or split up? If the danger we're facing is basically like this guy, I think we can split up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, if and if this guy's still alive, then chances are we'll make it out. Yeah. I mean, anything that could kill any of us would clearly have already eaten him. So... <laughs> Although, no given, given their location... It might have been a bit off-putting for some, you know, some of your more higher-class space nasties. The more discerning scavenger, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what do you fancy? I guess um, I shouldn't take the bridge because I don't know what I'm looking at, really. I can take, take medical or long sleep. I've been to medical. There uh, wasn't any sign of anyone. Okay. Um, then I'll head down to Longsleep then. Cool. I'll take the bridge. Leaving you, uh, Liam. What would you like to go to at all, if any? Uh, I'll, I'll hang around here. You know, liaise some more. <laughs> Check out. <laughs> There's a kind of cupboard in the corner you could liaise with. <laughs> mm. I'll check out the room. Let's see what's around here. You feel a tap on your shoulder, Liam, and it's uh, Evan. Ah, oh, Um, what, what, where should I go, Deturi? Where, where would I be best used? Um, I, I would, I would say, uh, check out, check out long sleep and make it, make sure everyone's awake. You know, someone might need waking up. I'm long, long sleep. That is your speciality, is it not, Evan? That that is my speciality. Um, the other Sams, we can we we can sort of share a hive mind at times, and uh, they always say that I am I have the best long sleep rating in Maitland. So yes, I shall go. Oh, it appears Renkov is going that direction too. Wonderful. I shan't be alone after all. And he Are there up. any Sams on board? Speaking of speaking of hard minds, Evan. I I do not recognise any. Um, generally, in a um, in a mine such as this, you wouldn't expect many. Um, we're we're too expensive um, for Maitland to risk in such dangerous um, places. Um, I hate to say it, Deturi, but humans are much cheaper much more easily replaced yeah I can imagine I can imagine <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks for that no. uh, enjoy uh, no thank you 
and he heads off um, after you, Misha, and we'll join you first as you head uh, towards Long Sleep. The first um, doorway, of course, is swinging open. Okay, and I shall walk into the passageway and see if the second one's open as well. Yes. So uh, could you roll an agility for me, please? I certainly can. Um, agility is a two, so that is a total of six. Um, I've just got to roll some. Oh. Okay. As you sort of make your way down uh, the dark, the dark corridor, you too manage to um, trip over something, and the um, a glass bottle sort of pings off your feet. You know the way they skit when you hit them right on the end, they skit around, sort of circle yeah. their way down. It, that and it clings off one side, then the other. It's like, pshing, 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 sort of ricochets across, and you sort of almost stumble backwards. But um, brave, strong Evan manages to grab you just in time and hold you for a moment before pushing you back upright. Are you okay, Rinkov? <laughs> did you not? Did you not see the bottle there? It was. Um, it was a really disturbing experience. And just before it, I tripped over a bottle. I, I forget that humans' eyes can't see so well in the dark as my own. That's also what helps me um, checking on all of you in long sleep, of course, and when you sleep, making sure you're okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it would be better for both of us if we don't talk about that part of your responsibilities. They say that... Um, they say that humans can't even tell when Sams are watching them as they sleep. Because we can have do it in such darkness. You, you see, Sams probably don't have uh, nightmares. So I need to explain just one thing to you, which is that humans do have nightmares. <laughs> and those nightmares are Sams. <sighs> Uh, of course, Evan not quite understanding sort of humour and barbed comments and things like that quite so well. Often takes things at face value. Says so it's it's just lovely to know that I'm in your dreams, Renkov. Um, are you here for a reason at all? Uh, Dutori told me that um, you might need helping long sleep, as it is my forte. Evan, do you have a like an accurate internal log that you can use to pre-plan events and activities? Like a an internal diary and calendar? Exactly. I can, yes. Um when we're back on the ship and away from here, uh, on the Nakuru, can you remind me um that Deturi sent you down here to be with me just I'm in just, case i forget i'm just making a note of it now Renkov. Right. just need to make sure i thank him properly okay, okay. note made after you. you, after you, Renkov. Right, I will hustle through into long sleep. Okay, um, the room is dim, it's dark. Again, there's no external um, windows, no view screens. And here the lights appear to be very much off. So all you're getting is a dim light that's come down the top five metres of passageway from an already very dim lounge. Um, all right, can I can I hit a light switch or similar? Um, you can feel around for one. This is a new ship to you, so you can make an estimate guess where you think there might be one. I shall make a guess as to where there might be one, and I shall just slap my hand there and hope for the best. Okie dokie, roll an education, please. Education, okay. 
I can't have science for this, I take it. Nope. Or engineering. Nope. Okay. Not catastrophic, I don't think. That's a six total. Um, you slam your hand against um, against where you'd make an educated guess to where it is, and your hand just slaps against hard metal. And it lets off a bit of a tin, and you hear a, a scuffle, a slight scuffle in the other corner of the room. Okay. I'm going to feel around that area, see if I can find the switch. Okie dokie. Um, I'll let you do that anyway without it, because you're just sort of feeling around. Um, your hand on that side runs across um, just uh, start with it's just metal. Um, then it sort of runs across sort of a scrap of paper. And then something sort of wet and a bit gooey and then it finds um, what you'd hope would be a light switch um i will press it okay the lights um slowly ping on um they appear to have been doctored so that um people appear to have like covered them with tape or something so that the intensity is a lot lower okay. um, and what you cause what you can tell is that instead of this being long sleep um the long sleep pods have sort of been replaced with more normal beds which is the first thing you can see you can see sort of shadows of some clothes thrown around and mm -hmm. some glinting of what you'd expect is more empty bottles but it's a very low light and it's taken a while for the light to brighten up okay so what i'm going to do is i will take a walk um clockwise roughly around the room um heading <laughs> towards the door to the head first mm-hmm um and peer into the head as I go round, but explore and just look for anything out of the ordinary or of interest. Okay. So as you go round, the first corner, if we go clockwise from the doorway, um where the little barrels are on the picture, that mm -hmm. is where there's sort of um that's where there's sort of clothing, piles of clothing and you know, their bags, their big bags they bought up are, there's some more yep. sort of leftover wrappers and stuff, and you sort of make your way past that. And um, you sort of go through to the head, you sort of poke your head through into the sort of little one metre corridor. Very good. Like, it's not great for the toilet to be right next to someone's beds, but luckily there's a bit of an airlock for those curry nights. If only every house had one, in fact. Like, you've got a little yeah. corridor there. Um, are you going straight? Are you going all the way through to the head? Um, yeah, it's, as I'm going around, I'll, I'll I'll lean in at least. Cool. It's li it's there. literally like a metre, two metres long of the corridor. It's a very short corridor, you know. Um, as you poke your head in, it's very dark inside. The light appears to have turned on the the little headlight, but again, that's got tape over it. And you do see a rather mangy looking toilet that appears to have not been flushed properly. Um, more beer bottles in the corner. Uh, a, a selection of magazines, from what you can tell. Some on um, engineering. Some, uh, there's a, a liaison officer's monthly there with a lovely looking picture of a well attired uh, lady in a in a spotless Maitland uniform, sort of <laughs> with a with like an over the head and a microphone. Like this would be right in the end of wheelhouse, you know. Yeah, something looking, yeah, and then like a couple of jazz mags in there as well, right? Okay, I shall um, uh, lean my head back out and uh, then continue my clockwise walk around the room. Okay, as you lean your head back out, you, you hear a sudden scream of intruders, 
and a figure ricochets, dives across at you and jumps at you to try and bundle you to the ground. Mm, and, good. Um, <laughs> um, I suppose for all intents and purposes, that probably puts us in a combat situation, Nisha. So, um, could you please roll for initiative? <laughs> it did sound uh, a bit elmo -y. I'll give you that. Yeah. So, yes, remind me how to do initiative. Um, you roll um, a 1d6 and add your agility, and I'll do it for, I'll do it for the uh, combatant. It's a picture of someone sent a Sam with you to Plus look agility. after you. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Okay, that, I mean, despite my lousy agility, that's actually an 8. You have the initiative. Okay, so um, you are in hand to hand. They are sort of on top of you a bit, but you've got the your arms are free, and you've got the first chance to do whatever you want to do. Really, um, I'm going to make an assumption until it's proven wrong that the person I'm dealing with is somewhat drunk, somewhat hungover, somewhat incompetent, and actually isn't trying to kill me. So on that basis, I shall as, as as it sort of leaps leaps on top of me, I shall try to pivot sideways and shove him backwards into the head. Ah, oh, that's very kind of you. Okay. Um, so it's going to be... Um, right, so what we're going to do is, for combat, I need you to roll a 1d6 plus your strength, please. Okay. And I've got to roll one for me as well. Okay, that's a seven. Not brilliant. But it is better than them because their strength is worse than yours and they rolled a one as well. So, that's Okay. Um, you sort of managed to grab them and using their momentum, you get to uh, flip them into that corridor and send them staggering towards the head. And you've managed to buy yourself a, like a, a meter or two of distance between the two of you as you stand in that doorway between long sleep and the head. All right. In that case, I will literally take a pace back and say to Evan, don't let them get out of there. Um, Evan's... Just, just there's no the door. There's no response from Evan. Oh, well, that's no help. Useless bloody <laughs> machine. Right. I'm then going to yell at, um, at the person in, who's struggling in the head. <laughs> Not an intruder. Here on official business. Okay, I'm going to roll for them. It's their turn. They're going to try and, uh, I guess, run towards you. Um, and they're going to move. They're running. They can get up to you. So they can be in hand-to-hand -hand again in their turn. So if you can imagine they've been thrown into their heads or banged against the wall, you've, you've mm -hmm. shouted at them and they've just come pinging towards you again. Intruder! Um, do I still have initiative then? Yeah, it's still a turn now, yeah. Um, he's had his, his chance to just be shoved to one side and reasoned with. Um, so as he comes in this time, I'm going to try and deliver a reasonably solid kick at him. I don't really want to cause him serious harm, but I want enough of a of a, a shock to maybe wake him up a bit. Okay. Uh, roll 1d6 plus your strength, please. Okie dokie. I've got a roll for him. Uh, that's a total of eight. And he's doing terribly because he's rolled a one for the second time. Told you that's why I use these dice. Um, you sort of swing your leg and you sort of catch him uh, between the legs. And he lets Ooh. out a, a, a howl. Oh! 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 And drops to his knees. It is a he. And uh, like throws up on the ground in front of him. And then sort of falls over sideways i don't know if you've watched the simpsons episode of um where they do the short films and man gets hit by football yes and he just like rocks back and forth he's like that in that position 
like sobbing. Um, I'm going to quickly glance around the room and see if there looks like anyone else here. There, uh, there's no one else in the room. Okay. In that case, I'm going to raise my um, voice a little bit. I'm, I'm not going to actually use the communicator. I'm just going to raise my voice and say, medic, and then ignore him <laughs> on the floor and go walking around the room to see what else I can check out. Okay. And um, at this point, the medic we have got was about to do something else and say, we'll take our little break there before finding out what the medic finds. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> Lovely. So... Um, Come back, everyone, in a few minutes. We're just going to go to the toilet, get a drink or whatever, have a break. Grab yourself some crisps or something. And we'll be back shortly for more kicks in testicles and um, puking and things like that. What a day. Cool. We've Let's kicked go. two out of the three of them so far. <laughs> that is true. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> exactly. Got to get the hat trick. Right. Uh, screen up. Music up. We're going silent.
Good evening, everyone. We're back and we're on the Grahams or the Martins, as I just accidentally called it off. It's not like I'm the GM or anything. Um, Gilly and I have been reminiscing over a shared, over a shared place we used to live, not at the same time or together, but <laughs> the same city. It doesn't really count. Um, there's still banging going on outside the window, Ewan. I don't know if you noticed that. They're still partying downstairs in the garden and it's one o'clock in the morning. Do yeah, I have to, do I have to do, going louder than it was before, I think. Do I have to do a middle-aged man thing and go down there and have a, like, threaten them with, I don't know, the om- ombudsman or something? <laughs> sort out the youngsters. <laughs> yeah, those rowdy 30-somethings. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm only calling them the youngsters because it's reasonably <laughs> close to my age. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> youth by <laughs> take. Yeah. Youth because, yeah, very sneaky. No, they're definitely not young. And nor are you. Stop lying to yourself. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Just accept well, it. Well, if I don't lie to me, <laughs> I to rely on you. <laughs> that is true. Okay, so we're on the Grahams, which is in orbit around the mining um, base that the Nakuru has been tasked. Yeah, too right, Jarrell. I will just go down there like, do this and I'll just ignore me. I like him. Well, I'm friends with him and one of them there is son is in my daughter's class at school and we get on really well. So I'm not I'm not going to go pointing a shout and let them have their nice day. Um, but yes, yeah, so we're on the Grahams and it's in orbit around the... Um, the mining base that the Nakuru are going. Um, they were tasked with re- with restocking, but now they found out there's some dead bodies there and they do need to get down there. The problem is the crew they've met on the Grahams aren't the best at helping them out with that. You see, the Grahams is kind of like um, the butlins of the mining world, where every 10 weeks, three miners get to go up and spend a week getting drunk and playing games and just not doing any work. Um, so far they've met... Um, Someone's so drunk, they're passed out in the corner of the lounge. They've met some crazed, excited, Elmo-like character who um, Misha has kicked between the testicles. Between the testicles, very accurate kick. Uh, leaving him puking and sobbing on the floor of uh, long sleep. And as Misha's cries for nurse rang out, rang out on medic, medic rang out. We head back to Shay and Liam, who um, had decided to take on the bridge, the last remaining room that no one has entered. So, Gilly, over to you. Yeah, I'll, is the door open, like all the doors seem to be on this ship? So the door from the lounge is open, but the door from the bridge actually appears to be shut, which would thrill Misha. Oh, Okay. I suppose I shall have a listen at the door. See if I can hear anything. Mm, um, You hear um, music. Um, Classical music ringing out. Could you roll your education for me, please? Yep. That's a five plus a two is a seven. It's certainly classical music. Um, it's it's uh, it's Mozart. Don't ask me to okay. name one. I'm I'm not as educated as your dice is. Um, <laughs> it is jarring in the surroundings you're in, and it's turned up quite loud, and it's almost it almost whisks you off off the Grahams in that moment. You know, it's a lovely moment. Stunning. Okay. Um, I suppose I'll open the door and have a shifty. Um, you attempt to open the door and uh, the wheel does not turn. Is it jammed or? Uh, could you roll for me? An education. Oh, how do you want to go about it? Do you want to go about seeing if it's jammed through your beefy arms or through thinking about what the possibilities could be? I'm going to go beefy arms. Ah. That's what Shay would do. Classic Shay. (laughs) Get get, get those beefy Shay arms wrapped around it and give it a 
give it a tug, see what happens. Five plus my strength is an eight. Okay, over your years, you've um, you've used these before, and you've um, you put all your strength into it, and from what you can tell, it appears that it's uh, locked from the inside, which is something that a bridge would have because it is a bridge, and if all else fails, the bridge needs to be able to separate, you know, keep people out. Yeah. Okay. In which case, I will bang on the door. Okay. Uh, roll strength for me, please, with those beefy banging strength knocking arms. Ooh, that's a six plus a three. The banging is so powerful that uh, Deturi almost jumps backwards in shock at the reverbering <laughs> echoes. Um, the music cuts down a little bit, and inside you hear a woman's voice shout out, I told the two of you I'm not coming out! Not until the, not until the Nakura are actually here. They're taking forever to dock and get him. Okay, well, we're actually here. This what? is the crew from the Nakuru. You're the crew from the Nakuru? Yep. And there's a moment and the music sort of... As if, as if it's a... Rec it's not a record, but it's almost like it's sort of, you know, the suddenness of it. And you hear the clicking inside and the door swings open. And there's sort of a, a lady who's um, in her mid-30s. And... Um, and she's a little bit more well turned out than the others. She's her her gear is still sort of mining gear, zip up overalls, um, but at least her sleeves are in the sleeves, and she's got both boots on, and um, she's not lying in bin bags. So she's <laughs> a couple of layers of social strata above what you've seen so far. Ah, the Nakuru, and who and who am I speaking to? I'm Hawkins. This is Deturi. Ah, uh, pleasure to meet you. She offers to shake both your hands. I'll shake her hand back. Liam will. She pauses and she's like, and she points at you, Liam. She's like, with that, you're, you're liaison, right? With that handshake. Uh, yeah, you guessed it. That's uh, me. I've been reading a magazine this week. Um, I don't know if you ever read it. Um, it's like Liais Liaison Monthly, I think it is. Um, and they were talking about the top 10 tips for a good first handshake. Have you read it? Because it feels like you've read it, unless it comes natural. Yeah, well, exactly. What uh, what month is that? Which oh, issue? Oh, we've, it's, it's been three years since we've had any new stock. So it's it's a bit like... Reading magazines here is a bit like going to the dentist or the doctors, you know. You're going through magazines from a long time ago. Three years back, probably. You know, classics. Classic, classic Classi make them, right? Classics never go out of fashion. I'm hoping that you guys have got some new magazines with you for us. And maybe a few new novels. I'm, I've run out of mine. I've, I've read Hound of the Baskervilles three times in the last month alone. That's... I tell you though, that's much better than the uh, the literature selection on uh, as I searched in my notes for the uh, for the Antilles <laughs> station. Mm. Nothing but Fifty Shades of Grey. <gasps> from what I remember, Fifty Shades of Grey, absolute that's my, classic. That's my favourite book. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's all right, but it's, it's, no, it's, no, Sherlock, it's no Sherlock Holmes, is it? Let's face it. Uh, what a guy. Anyway, I, I take it you, you, you guys are here to, um, to restock and to head down to the surface? Yep. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, have, you met, have you met the other two up here at all? We had the pleasure of meeting Wilkes. Ah, Wilkes, yes. Um, has he been? Has he started sleeping it off yet? Yeah, we left him asleep. Oh, he was banging on this door for two hours straight, wanting to sing a duet to Mozart. Mozart. Was, uh, 
can't be doing with it. I was coming up, I, I knew what it'd be like, but I wanted just a bit of peace and quiet, you know. It's just be nice, just be nice. And she sort of um, reaches over and picks up a bottle of uh, Maitland wine. Says, would you like a glass of, uh, if it's, it's a good Maitland year. Apparently, well, it's three years ago. Oh, go on then, why not? And, uh, uh, red or white? Oh, red. Yeah, sure. Thanks. That's the that's the good stuff. Maitland White has never has never been quite right. Maitland, Maitland Red's pretty good though. Um, it rhymes. She, it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> she sort of. Um, there's still a bit of untidiness in the bridge. It it looks very much like she's stashed stashed herself in there. She's got sort of a, a small cot that sort of cot bed that she's sort of sleeping in, and she's got her bits and pieces in there. Uh, she sort of rifles through and brings out a few tumblers and sort of pours some wine into them and hands them to you and says, uh, well, I'm really looking forward. I feel really refreshed and I've not got long left on the old 222. So I'm looking forward to getting down and finishing my time. So uh, I propose a toast to getting the job done and leaving. She raises the glass to the two of you. I'll drink to that. Mm. Uh, Liam will as well. Oh. You know, uh, yes, yes, the Turi is your name, I see. It is, it is. This this may not be the right time. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt your toast. But um, when it comes to getting the job done, I don't suppose you've heard... Uh, You've heard any shout of what's going on down there? Um, no, it's um, it's been policy um, for the last couple of years that um, everything is turned off. All communication is turned off until um, until heading back down. You know, an hour before we basically turn everything back on. When when we first started doing this um, for the first few years, there'd always be a call from someone on base. You know nagging you or trying to get people back down you know someone's injured themselves we're short can you can you cut it short by a couple of days station manager flock um she'd always be like oh you know we're short so and so can you get back down so it became a thing to just switch off you know and actually enjoy it it's your week after all uninterrupted breaks are important well, very much so and nothing really ever happens it's always the same sort of stuff anyway Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad you feel that way as well because yours might yours might go on a little bit longer. There, uh, from what we hear, uh, and sort of looks over to Shay for a bit a bit of agreement, but they're not they're not currently working down there. Oh, I don't know why. I don't know the details, but you know, we've, we've been asked to check it out. Well, that's not good because. Do you know why they're not? No. We, I mean, we haven't spoken to anyone down there. Hmm. The longer they don't work, the worse it is for us. The longer you've got to stay there, right? Yeah, it's all about, like, we do our time, but we still have amounts that we have to mine, and... We get to leave you, and at the end of our term is done. But we have to have to have hit targets to do it. Otherwise, we have to stay on until it, it is. And it's like a team, you know. So if that's not happening while I'm up here, I'm suffering because of other people. But they're on strike again. Uh, I think was that was that the deal, Shay? Um. I don't know, was that the deal? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Is that to uh, deter or me as GM? You as GM. Um, so the, what you've been told is that um, there's been two members of staff deceased, probably murdered, and another missing. So because of the foul play, they've had to um, sort of shut it down a bit, and the miners are reluctant to go back to work. So you probably could suggest there is some sort of 
strike potentially. Um, and just to just to be clear as well, because nine times out of ten, when I when I ask somebody something, I'm sort of backtracking on the fact that I may have given away something that someone else in the party didn't want to tell people. So <laughs> feel free to completely change the story on me. That's why I do it to Luke all the time, and I don't think I've actually ever told Luke either. But, you know. oh. <laughs> I, I call that I call that going the full Arneson. <laughs> She sort of looks across to the two of you. Are they on strike again? Sort of. <sighs> Themes has been a bit of foul play down there, which is why we're here to investigate. Oh, it's probably Parks. Theoretically, he's security officer, but there's never any problem with security. So he sort of he sort of made himself foreman. You know, next best thing, I guess he's ex-military and he gets all these ideas about his station. And he's like, the second that there's a problem, and it's good, you know, because you want to be safe. But he's like, everybody out, you know, and it's good. And people really support him for it. He cares about us. But for those of us that are, you know, only a few months away from finishing, sometimes you're almost willing just to, you know, get down there and do it and risk it. For those of us that have been there for years. He's a great guy, but... Oh, 